Welcome to Dry Eye for Medical Students. This will be some of the content we'll be covering today. In order to understand dry eye, one must first understand the anatomy. Tears are produced by the lacrimal gland and the accessory lacrimal glands. The lacrimal gland itself has two lobes and is found on the anterior superior temporal aspect of the orbit. The lacrimal glands produce tears which then drain into a tear lake. This is drained 80% by the inferior punctum and 20% by the superior punctum. These are then connected via the canaliculi to the lacrimal sac. This subsequently drains via the nasolacrimal ducts to the inferior nasal meatus. The tear film has several roles within the orbit. It maintains the smooth optical properties of the corneal surface. It also provides oxygen to the avascular cornea and lubricates the interface between the lids and the cornea which allows the removal of foreign bodies and debris. The tears also provide antibacterial properties to the cornea. The tear film itself consists of a deep mucous layer which is about 30-40%, to 40%, a middle aqueous layer which is about 60% and a surface oily layer. The aqueous component is produced by the lacrimal gland and the accessory lacrimal tissue within the fornices discussed earlier. Mucin component is secreted by the goblet cells within the conjunctiva, and the lipid component is produced by the myobian glands within the eyelid. The mucus layer allows the tears to spread and maintain the aqueous layer over the cornea for a suitable period of time. The aqueous component consists of electrolytes and protein, including IgA and lactoferrin, which give it, which give it its antibacterial properties. The surface oily layer is formed from the polar and neutral lipids secreted by the myobian glands. Blinking releases stored material from the ducts, and this layer prevents the evaporation of the tears. Here we can see some of the myobian glands mentioned earlier. Here are some of the symptoms of dry eye. Common causes of dry eye can be divided into three separate categories. Increased tear production, increased tear evaporation and imbalance in tear composition. Increased tear production is often caused by ageing and medical conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, lupus, scleroderma and Sjogren's. A quick word about Sjogren's. This is a chronic autoimmune condition where white cells infiltrate the exocrine glands resulting in destruction, specifically the lacrimal glands and the salivary glands. It is associated with connective tissue disorders and rheumatoid arthritis. A second the second cause of dry eye, tear evaporation, is often associated with eyelid disease such as ectropians and entropians. Environmental factors such as wind, smoke and dry air also contribute. The third cause of dry eye, imbalance in tear composition, is often caused by MGD, myobian gland dysfunction. This is, an, this is a chronic inflammatory process of the myobian glands, associated with skin conditions such as acne and rosacea. The, the oil glands in the lid of the rosacea sufferers secrete a modified oil which leads to inflammation of the myobian gland openings, which are found at the edge of the eyelid. The myobian glands can become blocked with thick secretions, and this alters the tear film composition as we discussed earlier. The oil composition of the tear film is reduced, resulting in dry eyes. When diagnosing dry eye, a thorough history must be performed. There are two other tests that can be used. The first being the Schrimmer test, which is performed by using a 5 by 35 mm strip of filter paper, which is anchored in the lower fornix and kept in place for five minutes, at which point the length of the wetting is measured. Less than five millimeters is considered a diagnostic of tear deficiency. The second test is the tear film breakup time, which assesses tear film stability. This is assessed after installation of a fluorescein dye into the lower fornix and the patient is asked to blink several times and then, to, uh, and then to refrain from doing so. The tear film is scanned with a broad slit lamp with cobalt blue filter looking for evaporation of the tear film which is characterised by the appearance of black spots. The tear film breakup time itself is the interval between the last blink and the first appearance of a black spot. The average three measurements is taken and a tear film breakup time of less than 10 seconds is indicative of dry eye. 
To treat dry eye, this depends on the underlying cause but can be divided into three broad categories, symptomatic, surgical and medical. Symptomatic treatments include ocular lubricants which are tear substitutes. They are used in mild dry eye and work by stabilising the tear film, decreasing optical aberrations and improving optical quality of vision. Examples include sodium hyaluronate and carmelo sodium. The type and frequency of the tear supplement depend on the underlying cause, with mucin deficiency needing a more gelatinous preparation and true aqueous deficiency needing very frequent 1-2 to two hourly application. In order to treat MGD, hot compressors are often used and then the glands are subsequently expressed. Surgical treatments of dry eye include inserting punctal plugs as well as cautery of the punctum. This will prevent drainage of tears and keep them suspended for longer. Medical options include tetracyclines, which may be used to treat rosacea, as well as immunosuppressant medication, as there is evidence for controlling corneal inflammation, which is often mediated by T-cells.